Hey, good morning class. This is the last introductory lecture to psychology, sociology, and anthropology where we sort of finalize and finish um, our look at the three main social sciences, giving you a general overview of everything uh, to do, actually not everything to do with anthropo anthropology. It's such a large discipline, but I'll give you a basic overview. And like I said previously, for those who have a background in this course, a lot of this stuff will be review, hopefully a few new things you learn, uh, but especially for those who haven't taken the course yet, um, or the grade 11 course yet, I should say, I want to make it something that's easily understandable, easily digestible, but also giving a general framework to help you understand uh, what anthropology is and how to apply it to um, future lessons and everything like that. So without further ado, let's get started here. We'll start taking a look at anthropology how it tries to help each other, help us understand each other and other cultures and well really everything like that anthropology um, like the others uh, psychology and sociology is obviously a social science so it deals with understanding society and the social world through the scientific method of you know a lot of observation analyzing both quantitative and qualitative data and you know testing out different hypotheses in social situations to help understand who we are and a lot of anthropology unlike sociology which does focus on the who we are anthropology focuses a lot on where we have come from and looking more back into human history um, to see where our origins are and where how, how society developed and how we got to know where we are so in my opinion at least i think that's the biggest difference between anthropology and sociology where sociology looks at the the here and now of the world and figuring out okay well how does society exist and function right now a lot of anthropology is looking at the history of um, culture and, and where we came from although obviously some sociologists study the past and some anthropologists do study uh, current societies. But overall, I think um, one of the key terms of anthropology and what it is, is ultimately the study of their hu of humans as well. Um, their origins, uh, their biological characteristics, you know, what makes us human as compared to chimpanzees, for example, and our cultural development. How did our culture develop, where did we come from, why are certain cultures different than others, uh, et cetera, et cetera. And based on the scientific methods, like I said previously, it is ultimately a social science. So um, they use the scientific method of making questions, testing or in hypotheses, testing those hypotheses, gathering uh, research data, analyzing that data, and um, basically developing theories about who we are and where we came from. So you can obviously see a lot of similarities and a lot of differences between the three social sciences, but overall, what their goal is, is, you know, to study the human condition, what it means to be human and, and why we are the way that we are. A um, couple amusing comics here, looking at sort of arche or not archaeology, sorry, anthropology from the past on the right, the uh, paper shredder prototype from back in the caveman days and uh, some amusing humor of... Uh, to what looks to be uh, African tribes people. I'm getting too old to hunt. Let's contact the professor who wanted to study us and eat the students he sends to do the research. Quite amusing. Um, but when we get on to anthropology, what we'll take a look at right now is that there are sort of four main subdivisions of anthropology where, oh, excuse me, a too bright early in the morning. Uh, <laughs> Um, but if you're uh, an anthropologist, you're probably going to study in one of these four major fields and each of them uh, deal, um, again, with that question of what does it mean to be human, uh, but from a different standpoint. So the first main subdivision um, is what's known as physical anthropology. And what it does is physical anthropology more or less analyzes sort of the, the mechanisms of biological evolution uh, genetic inheritance, uh, human adaptability and variation, and the fossil record of human evolution. And what I mean by that is it sort of studies the physical traits of what it means to be human and how that has changed over time. So I found this picture of human skulls and what we can see is um, 
although comparing uh, the human skulls to older primates, the physical anthropologists would be interested in how we changed biologically and genetically over the millions of years of human evolution. So, like I said, it's sort of the study of humanity as a biological species. Biologically, how have we changed? And we, you know, physical anthropologists really want to know why these physical differences exist. Uh, because obviously physical differences uh, between humans are easily visible. Just looking around downtown Toronto or the greater Toronto area, we're going to see a huge variation in human characteristics um, based on, you know, just simple things like facial features and skin color. We can see, you know, hundreds of different um, people belonging to hundreds of different cultures based on physical differences. And obviously biological um, biological understanding of humans is not everything that makes us human. We're much more than our biology, but it is very important nonetheless. So physical anthropologists would study things like the fossil records. They'd study our DNA. Um, they'd study genetics. So a lot of interrelationships with what we would consider, um, you know, sort of the life sciences and the study of humans, but brought to understanding how humans have changed over the course of human history. And that ultimately brings us to our second of the uh, subdivisions of anthropology, in this case, cultural anthropology, whereas physical anthropology looked at the biology of humans, uh, cultural anthropology looks at the culture of what makes us human. So sort of cultural aspects of, you know, language, communication, uh, subsistence and how we've grown and are able to feed ourselves as a culture. They'll look at things like economic patterns. Uh, they'll look at kinship, including sex, marriage, uh, brotherhood, and, and familial ties. They'll look at socialization, political organization. Um, what else? Uh, things like social class, if we're talking about economics, gender, religion. Anything that deals with culture and what makes different cultures around the world obviously different. And... You know, cultural anthropologists really want to know why do these variations exist in the first place and how are they ultimately maintained as, as cultural traditions, which are generally considered society's collective identity. So, you know, why is it that uh, certain cultures have certain, uh, you know, identities and traditions that are, are part of their culture that are very, very important? And thinking off the top of my head, you know, maybe a cultural anthropologist would want to know uh, the background of Chinese foot binding, for example. Why did Chinese foot binding become and stay a part of Chinese culture for hundreds of years? Uh, cultural anthropologists would also look at things like, you know, why do, you know, us in the West, why is it that, you know, we became such a very uh, culture based solely around time? Why is it that in the West we're so worried about, you know, starting school and work at a specific time, ending at a specific time? What changed, whereas, you know, our ancestors worked with the, the general schedule of the day and not on any predetermined time. So uh, those are two very small examples of what a cultural anthropologist would look at. But, you know, they're interested in anything to do about culture. And just like I mentioned in the sociology one, uh, society is a huge, huge branch of, of research. And so is, in this case, culture. Culture is absolutely massive and anything dealing with culture, an anthrop cultural anthropologist would want to take a look at. Thirdly, moving on, we have archaeology. And archaeology, I think a lot of people are uh, quite familiar with it. And it's not solely the uh, Indiana Jones of, you know, finding old relics, returning them to museums, stopping the Nazis and everything like that. But archaeology is, is something I think a lot of people are familiar. And it's basically the study of you know prehistory and early history of cultures around the world through looking at how humans live their their social um, their cultural structures that they have the buildings and the relics that they leave behind so what they're looking for is archaeologists tend to try to find you know sites where they believe um, the relics of and the remains I should say of ancient cultures are and they want to excavate, date these things, analyze the material remains of past society. Because unlike physical anthropology and cultural anthropology, especially looking at the past, 
uh, you know, anthropologists are only human, and they do bring certain biases into uh, their, how they do their work. Although all social scientists try to minimize bias as best we can, we can only really look and understand the past through our own through our own biases and our own experiences, however small and minute they may be. Whereas archaeology, it's a physical record of how people live, so it does, in a large way, eliminate biases as to how people live and what or sorry how people live and the society and the type of culture that they lived in so you know archaeologists in general just study the material remains of ancient cultures and whether that is jewelry if you ever go to a museum there's you know a lot of ancient jewelry that people have a lot of pottery uh, cookware is there uh, they're building structures building materials so anything dealing with the physical remains of, of old societies uh, is fair game for the archaeologist and you know they even study you know the million 2.5 odd million years of human history before the written word uh, how people lived before we were able to communicate before the, these you know cultural or sorry not cultural um, before the, the agrarian revolutions of you know 12,000 BC they want to know how human beings lived and that really takes us to the last main subdivision of anthropology which is linguistics and it's really just the study of human languages and how language evolved in the first place currently anthropologists estimate there are about 6,000 human languages and a lot of them are going extinct as you know the majority of the world takes to some of the major languages obviously the biggest one being English uh, but linguistic anthropology they want to know you know the human communication process and how that impacts sociocultural influences. How does language affect us and shape our societies? You know, they study things like uh, not just uh, written communication or uh, spoken or uh, oral communication, I should say. They also look at things like nonverbal communication. They look at things like uh, verbal communication in the written word, the structure, function, and history of languages, uh, the dialects, and how they're, they're offshoots of main languages. So they want to know everything about communication, human communication and how it affects our culture and society so overall those four main subdivisions do give us a very very good strong understanding of what it means to be human and how culture and society is shaped over the course of human history whether they're studying society right now or whether they're studying society, ancient societies of, of thousands or tens of thousands of years ago so if you're We'll sort of move forward to uh, anthropology in the current time in terms of if you're going to study current societies because it's very, very difficult to study previous societies as we have not really invented any time machines. We can only study their sort of remains and what they've left behind. But for anthropologists today studying uh, societies and cultures, perhaps, uh, you know, an African bush tribe, for example, the main way a lot of, or the main way, not a lot of, the main way anthropologist study is what's known as participation observation by participating in a society and observing it because anthropologists know that the best way to actually understand and know another culture and society is really to live in it as an active participant rather than simply an observer taking on the culture and the tradition and the roles uh, associated with those societies you get a much greater understanding of what that society is you know, and by physically and emotionally participating in the social interaction, the society's, you know, become an accepted member. And it's so much better to be an accepted member of society, to, to join into that society, rather than being sort of an outside observer. By getting into that society, you'll learn more about the cultures and the ways and what people do. So Anthropology, I think, is, is a fascinating discipline because you do hear a lot of anthropologists and famous anthropologists being able to live in those societies and cultures and knowing something outside of your own culture and something outside of your own immediate experience. So, one example is a woman named Diane Fossey, and she's kind of similar to Jane Goodall, if you know her. Both of them are famous for studying the gorillas and the the wild apes of Africa. So, although not, you know, studying humanity in this case, uh, they have the same idea of participation after or participation uh, observation 
because Diane Fossey believed that in order to study gorillas effectively, she really